Greetings and welcome back to another edition of the End Time Watchman. And uh, the title of our program today is Jesus is the reason for the Christmas season. Jesus is the reason for the Christmas season. And uh, allow me to take this opportunity to wish everyone a uh, happy Christmas when it comes and a prosperous new year should we all make it over to the other side. Well, this program is telling us that Jesus is the reason for the Christmas season. And of course, I believe that this is a statement that I'm sure uh, most of us watching or listening uh, would have heard uh, before. Uh, but you would be surprised to know how much people do not know this fact. How much people out there that are oblivious to the fact that Jesus is actually the reason for this season. And you know, while history uh, teaches that uh, for centuries other races of people and other religions have celebrated this season uh, for different reasons and uh, under different names, uh, the season itself is known worldwide, actually. It is known worldwide and accepted to be called the Christmas season. The Christmas season. Uh, the word Christmas, uh, it originates from the phrase Christus uh, may say. Uh, I'm not too sure if I'm pronouncing these words correctly, so I'll have it on the screen for you to see. Christus Miese, and uh, it was first recorded in the year 1083, uh, which means uh, the Mass of uh, Christ or Christ's Mass. That is what it means. Uh, the word can be broken, of course, in, into Christ and Mass. Uh, Christ comes from the Greek word Christos, uh, which translated from the Hebrew. It means Messiah, or it means anointed. In other words, it's talking about the Christ. Of course, Mass is the English version of the Latin word Missa, M-I-S-S-A. Uh, that is a celebration of the uh, uh, Eucharist. Oh, uh, most of us know it as the communion, as we take communion is in church. So this is done in memory of Jesus Christ, which of course we know that as we take communion, we do it in remembrance of uh, his death on the cross. As we eat the bread, it's symbolic of eating his body. And as we drink the wine, it is symbolic of drinking his blood. So the whole thing is all, is all centered around Jesus Christ. He is the reason for the Christmas season. So it is abundantly clear that it is in no uncertain terms that Christmas is celebrated solely because of Jesus Christ and is the celebration of Jesus Christ himself, uh, the savior of uh, this world. And you know, and all that we do during this season, you know, the, uh, the gathering together of uh, families, uh, the sharing of gifts, you know, the, the food we eat, the laughter we share, all that we do is centered around Jesus Christ. It stems from the celebration of Jesus Christ and uh, as you know the young this generation as uh, they grow up they are not being taught these things we do not know these things and so they grew up thinking that Christmas is all about giving gifts and receiving gifts and, uh, and, and, uh, and it's about Santa Claus and all that kind of a thing Christmas trees but Christmas is about Jesus Christ the fact that he came to this world and he came to save mankind from eternal destruction that is what we we celebrate when we celebrate Christmas Isaiah chapter 9 verses 6 to 7 it says for a child is born to us a son is given to us 
the government will rest on his shoulders and he will be called wonderful counselor mighty god everlasting father prince of peace his government and his peace will never end he will rule with fairness and justice from the throne of his ancestor david for all eternity and john chapter 3 verses 16 and 17 further tells us he says for this is how god loves the world he gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life god sent his son into the world not to judge the world but to save the world through him and furthermore luke chapter 19 and verse 10 tells us for the son of man comes or for the son of man came to save and seek those who are lost so he came for a good reason mankind was headed to certain destruction there was no hope for us but god had a plan because when he created us first adam and eve you i'm sure you know about that story they fell they sinned and they brought sin into this world and because of that we were all doomed to certain destruction but god had a plan and the coming the first coming of jesus christ as a baby into this world was his plan put into action a plan to redeem mankind back to god where they belong and of course uh, his uh, his birth is what we uh, consider to be his first coming but it also puts us in what we call the end times the bible also tells us that he is coming back again in other words there is going to be a second coming but this time he is not coming back as a lamb as he came the first time he is coming back as a lion on this occasion and he's coming back to fully and completely complete the work that he started the second coming will be a fearful a mournful time for the wicked for people who are wicked who, who are living in sin but it will be a day of peace and rejoicing for the righteous those who have accepted jesus christ as lord and the savior revelation chapter 1 verses 7 tells us look he comes with the clouds of heaven and everyone will see him even those who pierced him and all the nations of the world will mourn for him yes amen and revelation chapter 22 and verse 12 tells us again and jesus himself speaking here he says look i am coming soon bringing my reward with me to repay all people according to their deeds and on that great judgment day revelation chapter 20 verses 12 to 15 tells us i saw the dead both great and small standing before god's throne and the books were opened including the book of life and the dead were judged according to what they had done as recorded in the books the sea gave up its dead and death and the grave gave up uh, their dead and all were judged according to their deeds then death and the grave were thrown into the lake of fire the lake of fire is the second death and anyone anyone whose name was not found recorded in the book of life was thrown into the lake of fire and matthew chapter 25 and verse 46 tells us but the righteous will go into eternal life and what will happen then revelation 21 verse 4 says he will wipe away every tear from their eyes and there will be no more death or sorrow or pain or crying all these things are gone forever 
the righteous will go into eternal life. Those who have accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, who believe in him, believe in what he did when he came to this world uh, 2,000 years ago. And those who have not accepted him, the unrighteous, the wicked, they will be thrown into a lake of fire for all eternity. This is what they call the second death. And I submit that uh, when the Bible speaks about death, it is not talking about the death we experience in this life, in this world, where we die and there's nothing. But death is eternal separation from God because when eternity, when we all cross over into eternity, no one is going to die as we know it here. We will all be there for eternity, forever. We will all be living on forever, but some will be in eternal torment and others will be in eternal bliss. On which side, which side do you want to end up on? And that is a question you should be asking yourself today. Let us reflect on these things seriously as we celebrate this season. Remembering that Jesus Christ is the reason for the Christmas season. Remembering why he came in the first place. And remember that that plan is still in motion now until God says uh, uh, enough. And so there is still opportunity for anyone out there that is watching or listening to receive Jesus Christ, to receive his blood-bought salvation today before it is too late. And uh, time is fast running out his second coming and the subsequent judgment of all mankind is right around the corner it is right around the corner are you ready for that time have you made the the the, the choice or have you chosen which side of eternity you want to be on make up your mind today because tomorrow is not promised to you or anyone for that matter for Jesus Christ can uh, rapture his church and bring those who are already ready out to safety uh, from what will be uh, coming to the world afterwards or you don't know you can lose your life somehow or some way uh, nobody knows what tomorrow holds so as you are still breathing today you have the opportunity today make that wise decision to submit and surrender to Jesus Christ and give him your life come back to God where you belong before it is too late and on that note I'll come to the end of the program but just before I go as usual I want to uh, just share the message of salvation to those who would want to hear it right now because all of us, we need salvation. If you want to escape that lake of fire and get into heaven, get into heaven, we need salvation. None of us are good enough to, do, to, to, to get into heaven. Uh, deeds cannot get into heaven. Money cannot get, it, get us into heaven. All of us, we were born in sin, and because of sin, we deserve heaven hellfire that is why the scripture tells us in Romans chapter 3 and verse 10 that no one is righteous not even one why because verse 23 tells us for everyone has sinned we all fall short of God's glorious standard so we all deserve hellfire but because of what Jesus did because of the fact he came and died and shed his blood in our place he died for us the punishment he took, he took it for us so that we would not have to go through all that. So he's offering freedom. He's offering that gift of salvation to us today as a free gift. A free gift. All you need to do is to accept him. Accept him. Accept him for who he is and accept what he did to uh, purchase your freedom today. Romans chapter 6 and verse 23 tells us for the wages of sin is death but the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord accept him today 
how can you receive that Romans chapter 10 verses uh, 9 to 10 it simply says if you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead it says you will be saved and verse 10 goes on to say for it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God and it is by openly declaring your faith that you are saved so all you need to do is to voice it believe it and you will receive it and it does not matter who you are that is why it says in Romans chapter 10 and verse 13 for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved everyone no one is exempted from this wonderful offer of salvation today and we have this opportunity all because of Jesus Christ it does not matter how dark this world looks at the moment Jesus Christ is our light to navigate to the right path to the path of righteousness he himself Jesus said in John chapter 12 and verse 46 he says I have come as a light to shine in this dark world so that all who put their trust in me will no longer remain in the dark so we don't have to stay in darkness anymore we can step out of darkness and come over into the light of Christ at this very moment if we so choose to do so but we have to choose for him he's not forcing us he's not forcing you but he's asking you to make the right choice he's telling you what the right choice is for you to escape torment for all eternity for for you to escape that lake of fire all you need to do is to accept him and he will give you life eternal life in bliss where there will be no worries no more pains as we heard before nothing to worry about that is what he wants for all of us and so you can have that today only just come and surrender your life to Jesus Christ before it is too late and with that we come to the end and I hope that you will accept the offer of salvation today because as I said before tomorrow is not promised but as we go, I, would, uh, I want to ask you and encourage you to please share uh, this, this program along with others uh, that you may see on my channel. Uh, share them so that we can get this wonderful message out, this wonderful offer out to the entire world, the four corners of the globe, so that everyone can have the same wonderful opportunity to come and receive Jesus Christ before it is too late. Thank you for joining us, thank you for watching, and thank you for listening. And I'll see you next time, if there is a next time. God wish you bless you, and goodbye. Don't forget that to contact me for any reason, you can find me on Facebook by searching for Curtis Minister Roach. Minister Curtis Roach. Or our page, The End Time Watchman. Just leave me a message and I'll reply at my earliest. Also, subscribe to my YouTube channel and be blessed by the hundreds of videos available to you. Please feel free to share any video to help us spread the good news of Jesus Christ. You can also follow me on Twitter at Roach underscore Curtis. Should the Lord continue to tarry, See you next time. God bless. Hey, boy, sound is something now. Hear the Father say, Don't get left behind. Don't get left behind. Don't get left behind. Boy, the rapture is coming. Don't get left behind. Don't get left behind. Uh huh.